It's a new era of cheap grills. A restaurant classic that'll give Chili's a run for their money. It doesn't cook with fire. It cooks with electricity. It goes by many names. Because they all come from the same factory in China. So epic, we need excessive lens flares. It's the Smokeless Indoor Barbecue Grill. Hi, my name is EJ Massa. It's been a while since I did cheap grill reviews. And actually, the guy who usually sends me cheap grills, Air Joe, he sent this grill at the beginning of the pandemic with this note. I'm quarantined and drunk. Well, Air Joe, I hope your liver's doing okay because we're on the one year anniversary of 14 days to slow the spread. At the very least, you'll get a review of the cheap grill you sent. So there's a plus. Oh, and I'm shooting this with anamorphic cinematic lenses because it's been a year of a pandemic and I'm bored. As I said in my intro, I couldn't find this particular product on Amazon anymore. There is one that goes by another name and it looks just like this one. So I assume they're the same. My guess is that factories in China just produce a ton of random stuff like smokeless grills and then other companies will buy those random smokeless grills and brand them with their own branding and then send them out and sell them to you. That clone of this grill goes for around 30 bucks. And to be honest, I don't know much about smokeless indoor grills, except one time I had a roommate that had a George Foreman grill, and I think that is pretty much the quintessential smokeless indoor grill. And doing some research at my local Walmart, the George Foreman grill is still around, and it goes for about double the price of this one at $60. You have this one, which has a lid and goes for $90, and then you have a Ninja branded one that has the deluxe price of $170, and it has a temperature probe and all sorts of bells and whistles. So price-wise, this is definitely on the cheaper side of smokeless grills, especially comparing to the ones you find in big box stores. I looked up the company on the box and they seem to sell a bunch of these random gadgets. Like this one where you can pour a beer into it and it will pour you a beer. And here I am pouring a beer directly into a glass like a chump. Taking it out of the box and it feels pretty light and cheap. It comes with a book of instructions and recipes and I'll check that out later. You have a non-stick grill surface, a metal drip tray that's ooh, that's bright, and a power cord with a heat control knob. The way these grills work is very simple. The current goes through the cord and then goes through this loop, which in turn heats up the grate. The drip tray goes on the plastic stand, the grate goes on that, and then you plug in the cord into the grill grate and that's it. There's some beauty in the simplicity of it. One interesting thing about the control knob, the picture on the box actually lists approximate temperatures on the dial, while the actual knob has high, medium, low, and warm. The recipes in the manual actually list exact temperatures to cook at, so I'm going to use an infrared surface thermometer to see what temperature each setting is. The warm setting seems to be around mid to high 200 degrees Fahrenheit. The low setting looks to be mid to high 300 degrees Fahrenheit. The medium setting is around 400 to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, and the high setting is in the 500s. Now that we figured out all the temperatures this thing cooks at, let's cook some food. And Red Cow Entertainment's very own Nina Shaleski had a very good idea of what to cook on this thing. You should try to recreate those exact items on there. That's <laughs> a, that is a, a good idea. idea. So that's what I'm gonna do. However, there is one problem. There's no way this much food fits on this grill. I think they photoshopped tiny steaks on there. Also, the freaking manual says not to overcrowd the grill. So I'm gonna recreate the spirit of the box by cooking one steak, one salmon steak, and two kebabs. For the steak, I have hey, that lens flare is blocking the steak. Get out of here, J.J. Abrams. Get out. For the steak, I have this grass-fed ribeye, which I'll season with my all-purpose rub, recipe in the description below, and a decent amount of Montreal steak seasoning. And I seasoned all sides. Next for the salmon, I usually like my salmon boring, so I'll just season it with my all-purpose rub. Then I'll hit it with a lemon after I cook it. And finally, I was at my local butcher and I saw some pre-made kebabs, so I said, what the hell? I'll buy them. This one is a lemon chicken one and this one is a teriyaki beef one. I didn't realize at the time that the meat on the kebabs were pre-cooked. They were swimming in some sauces and marinades and then when I pointed them out, they quickly wrapped them up. 
But it kind of makes sense because the meat and the vegetables cook at different rates. So now they'll be both cooked through at the same time. So we'll just throw them on the grill, get some grill marks on them, heat them up, and they should be fine. Now we're ready to cook. I place the smokeless grill in front of my other grills to, to really send the message that it's, a, that's, that it's an imposter. I think that'll be a good temperature to cook the salmon. The instructions say to coat with cooking spray. So I hit the grate with a generous amount of Pam. Then I put on the salmon, the ribeye, and then the kebabs. Comparing to the box, yeah, there's no way you can fit that much food. Unless you had like mini steaks and very skinny kebabs. I suddenly had the inspiration to make those fancy grill marks you may see at Texas Roadhouse. So I turned the steak 45 degrees. And I did the same for the salmon. And I rotated the kebabs for even cooking. I flipped the steak and oh my goodness. Those are some beautiful grill marks. I'm impressed. And ditto for the salmon steak. Puts the picture on the box to shame. Look at those gray, disgusting meat blobs. Now that's a perfect product photo for the box. First, I took off the teriyaki beef kebab because that seemed done. And after cooking on each side for about eight minutes, I took off the steak, I took off the salmon, and finally the chicken. I cut open the steak and yeah, that's what I was aiming for. On the rare side of medium rare. And it looks so tasty, glistening under the lights. Let's see how this grill did. It's good. It did a good job. That's a good steak. It's a grass-fed steak. It's very good. Really good beefy flavor. I love Montreal steak seasoning. Um, it doesn't have like a sear, but it had pretty grill marks and it tasted good. To finish off the salmon, I squeeze a lemon wedge over it. And yeah, it's flaky and it looks perfectly cooked. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's perfectly okay salmon. It is pretty with the grill marks. Um, I'd rather it on a real grill. It would, uh, you can see my breath. It's a little cold in here. Uh, I'd rather it on a real grill where you can get a little bit of that charcoal taste. If you were to do it on this grill, season it a little better with like a herb butter or something like that. It does cook it perfectly fine. It was perfectly cooked. I My fault, I need to season it a little better. The beef kebab looks colorful and appetizing. Guess we'll see how it tastes. You know, I've never really had a kebab before, or if I did, it was very unmemorable. Uh, I don't know what, what it is about meat on sticks, but it just doesn't appeal to me. Especially in this configuration, I think it would, I'd rather it just be all meat or all vegetables. Um, but you know, I was just trying out what was at my local butcher shop, so this is what we're doing. That's just not my favorite. Uh, so there's, it's a little bit teriyaki and it's a little bit sweet, but it's something something off about it. So probably won't get these again. The races are good. If you are married to the idea of having both veggies and meat on the same stick, um, you know, pre-cooking them a little bit, maybe sous vide or something, um, the meat, pre-cooking the meat sous vide or something, might not be a bad idea. I don't know. That's just, I'm just, I'm just riffing off the top of my head, but I would rather, again, meat on one stick, vegetables on the other, and don't mix the two. And finally, how is that ye old butcher shop chicken kebab? Not the biggest fan. Probably won't get these again. Sorry, ye old butcher shop. I probably season the chicken similarly to the beef, uh, I, you know, when I think kebab, even though I don't have too many, I think of, um, I think of teriyaki flavor. So the lemon flavor does nothing for me. Vegetables are perfect. After the cook, I will say the parts are very easy to wash. You just need to wash the grill grate in the drip tray. So I think that was an adequate test for the device. Normally I cook ribs when I test out products, but I don't think it's necessary here. No. I'm gonna cook ribs, but I'm gonna cheat a bit and cooked thin sliced beef short ribs I got from Costco. That disappointing beef kebab got me craving some decent teriyaki flavored meat. And wouldn't you know it, the manual has a recipe for Korean beef short ribs, 
That looks tasty enough. So I mixed all those marinade ingredients in a bowl. I'm actually only doing one third of the recipe since it's only me eating it. And I don't need to eat three pounds of Asian flavored beef alone in the garage. I put one pound of beef short ribs in a dish, poured that marinade all over them, made sure the marinade covered all the beef, placed the cover on it, and then left it in the fridge for around eight hours. When it was time, I turned the dial to medium because this recipe called for a temperature around 400 to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. And after spraying the grill with cooking spray, I layered on the beef until the whole pound was on the grill. For a little more extra flavor, I brushed some of the leftover marinade on them. After about 10 minutes, I flipped them over. They were already looking awesome, although I moved them around the grill because the center of the grill is a bit of a hot spot compared to the edges. And after 10 minutes on that side, I pulled them off for a taste test. This is the final test. Are the recipes in the booklet good? Is the grill good? Let's find out. It's pretty freaking good. Wow. One, that's good beef. So Costco beef uh, short ribs sliced thin like that, flanken style. Amazing. Very tender. Um, really good beefy flavor. Um, that marinade in the recipe book extremely it's a it's just perfect uh the soy sauce asiany uh taste um this is what i was looking for in those kebabs and it's cooked perfectly on the 30 dollar smokeless grill I was quite surprised by this little thing. Uh, one good thing about Air Joe sending me random grills is that it forces me to use things that I wouldn't consider. I have a gas stove, I have a cast iron skillet, which in my mind pretty much performs the function of this. I don't care about grill marks, so a cast iron skillet is good enough for me. But maybe you don't have a stove, or maybe you don't have a gas stove, maybe you are you have an electric stove and it doesn't heat up pans very well, then I don't know, maybe this thing would be perfect for you. You know, a lot of people make great food on the George Foreman grill and swear by them, and I'm not that big of a snob to say that they're wrong. Now this device, or at least this specifically branded device, isn't sold by Amazon anymore. So let's see this review as a general overview of indoor smokeless grill and if you think that this fulfills your needs then go for it. I can see why they're so popular and of course since this is smokeless you'll have to provide your own flavors with seasonings and marinades. But this cooks food and it cooks food well and it was kind of fun. I'm surprised. Maybe I need to be sent other things that I usually dismiss. Maybe I need to be sent a device that you pour a beer into and then in turn, it pours you a beer. Maybe I'm missing out. Did you know that I do a very long podcast with Frankie Frayne every other week about pop culture, entertainment, and things we're working on? Did you know that? If you subscribe to us on Patreon, send us a couple dollars at any level, then you have access to this podcast. It's one of the, my favorite things that I do. So please do that and you'll be more entertained by me and Frankie and the discussions we have. Anyway, that's all I got for now. Until next time, bye.